This is the plaintiff, Manish Ghosh. He says he rented his car to the defendant so he could drive for Uber. And when he returned it, the car reeked of urine. That's right, the guy did his business in the front seat and the back seat. He also banged it up, got tickets, and is a crazy individual who now owes him $5,000 for everything he's out. So he's suing. This is the defendant, Fareed Zamanzada. He says he got a call from the cops one day and was told he was going to be placed under arrest because he stole the plaintiff's car. Huh? He had a verbal agreement with the plaintiff to rent the car week to week. He had already returned it to him, and the plaintiff caused him undue stress and aggravation. Now the crazy man's suing him for all this money for no good reason. That's outrageous. Bottom line, he's done with the guy and wishes he would just go away and leave him alone once and for all. He's accused of stinking up a car rental. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $5,000 for false allegations, lost wages, and repairs. All parties, please use your radiance. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket. The plaintiff rented his car to the defendant so he could drive for Uber, and the car came back with urine stench and tickets. But the defendant says the plaintiff called the cops and falsely claimed the car was stolen. It's the case of urine Uber trouble now. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, in. Mr. Ghosh, you are suing Mr. Zamanzada for $5,000 um, for damages stemming from a car that you rented to him, and you have a counterclaim against him for $5,000 as well for making false allegations to the police and for lost wages and some other miscellaneous items. What is going on, gentlemen? Can I start? Yeah, the thing is, I rented him on 6th March 2018, and... Uh, you rented him what? My car. What PLC kind car. of car is it? It's a Toyota Camry. Toyota Camry. Yeah. Okay. You rented it to him for what? For drive... Like he gonna drive for Uber and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So you used the car. You didn't have your own car to be an Uber driver. No. Okay. And so you used the car for how long? It is almost six months, Your Honor. Okay. And uh, what goes wrong? The thing is, at the beginning, I told him the rent is three fifty okay. uh, a week. Okay. So uh, he uh, first first two weeks. And like he was negotiating, then I said, okay, for first two weeks, I'll give you for 300, but after that, uh, you have to pay me 350. But in this mean, uh, within this two weeks, uh, he had an accident, and when the two weeks pass, he never pay me 350. He, Would you accept 300? Yeah, I accept 300. Okay, and, and then the week after that, you also accept 300. Yeah. Exactly. And the week after that, and the week after that, and the week after that, do you have a contract with him where it says he's supposed to pay 350? No, I don't have. Okay. I don't have and any what contract. were you supposed to pay? Three fifty or three hundred? Your Honor, uh, the deal was three hundred. You know the, and the car, two thousand fourteen. This is average rent for this car, for any car dealer. When you go, Your Honor, this is three hundred dollar for this car. When do you decide and why that you're going to take the car back? Uh, on July, what happened? I. When I tell him, he he say he gonna raise the uh, fees, but he go up to wait. He said what? He said he's going to give me 350 but then he gave me 325 a week. And uh, that time I decided, no, I'm going to take my car back because that's, I can't uh, do with that. So then I told him on August 21st, I think I told him to, you have one week. Okay. So um, On August 21st, on, you tell him you have until August 28th. Yeah. And then he say, okay, I'm going to give you a car back. But after two days, I um, noticed that he had a ticket which is pending. He didn't pay that and he didn't even tell me. So the ticket came by mail and I said, I text him that you got to pay that. And he said, okay, I'll pay. Okay. Did you pay the ticket? Uh, Your Honor, I was going to, uh, for hearing for the judge because the, that wasn't my fault and I, and I wanted for hearing. He put pressure on me to return the car. I said, the deal is not over. You have to tell me one week in advance. That he I says he did tell you one week in no, advance. No, Your Honor. I have all documents with me, as taxes with me. All is, you can read it, Your Honor. I have every proof from my payment, 300. He never told me 350. The deal was okay, 300. Well, I, I'm not worried about that at all. Oh, okay. He's not going to get 350 okay. unless he has a contract that says 350 when he spends a year accepting okay, 300. Don't worry about that, okay? okay? Now, mm -hmm. you end up calling the police and telling them... Oh that he is not authorized to have your car. Yeah. Okay. 
And then why don't you just call him and say, I told you to return the car. I was calling him, but uh, he keeps telling me that he had another two tickets that if I return your car, I'm not going to pay those it, another two tickets. I have the proof in the texting. Let me that, see that. Yeah, I want to sure. see that because that shows a certain amount of, uh, takes a certain someone to say that. Can I see it in your phone as opposed to a picture of it? I mean, thank yeah, you for sure. taking a picture, but I'd like to see the. Sure. You're very manipulative. He over and over, he says, you need to bring my car back. You need to bring my car back. You need to bring my car back. Don't go too far. I don't want you to be in a problem with the law and insurance. He says, are you coming or not? The car will be returned when their deal is over next Tuesday. I will return it Saturday. He tells you no today, and you say peaceful. He says right now, and you say don't change your mind. One day tell me Friday, and the next hour tell me tomorrow. It's not going to be like this. Don't threaten me. It's against the law. When I rent the car, it's temporarily mine. He keeps maintaining that he told you to return on the 28th, that he gave you two extra days because that's what you asked for. Did he pay for the week of August 28th? Um, did he pay on August 28th? Yeah. When did you get the car back? On August 31st. How did you get the car back? Uh, he left it like five miles away from my home and left the key, everything over there. But when I go there and he's telling me... Why didn't he bring it to you? That's what my question is. I was texting about that. Why didn't you give it to me? Okay, so you, you, why did you drop it off five blocks away? The way your owner, each taxes, he threatening me. He said, do you return my car or not? Today, That's he says, question. you just read it. No, no my was, question is, everybody stop. I asked a simple question. Why did you return? <coughs> what happens is the police come and talk to you, right? Because he calls the police, correct? No, no. Did the police call you? Police called me on the Tuesday. I was already returned this car or last Friday. The car was already returned, Your Honor. And the police told me, uh, you are under arrest. We issue you On the phone? Yeah, on the phone, yeah. How can they tell you you're under arrest <laughs> on the phone? No. no. He says you are uh, because- There's a warrant for your arrest or- Yeah, he said you come to present because you are, uh, your arrest warning is, has been issued, your plate and your license, you have to come to present. And I asked the police, sir, what is that for? He says, do you- rent a car from Mr. Goshal? I said, yes. He said, why he did not return his car? I said, sir, I returned this last Friday. I have evidence. He said, okay, hold on. I gave you a call back in five, 10 minutes. Okay. Then an officer called me back. And he says, Zaman Zada, you are fine. I said, what do you mean? He said, you are okay, your case is closed. Probably he called him, make sure. With yeah, him. right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I was so nervous, your honor, because I was under arrest. Even how, you're not under arrest. You're on a telephone yeah, call. But even <laughs> and you're asking for how much for that? You want uh, two thousand dollars because he made a false allegation to the police? I mean, he's not. You know. This is when did you call it into the police? I call on thirty first. Uh, I went to the police station and make a file at like eight p.m. on. Uh, and when did you get the car back? On 31st, when I get the car back, at 9 p.m., I went back to police station on 31st August and made those all the reports. Like, I don't want Close to it go out. farther. Right. Yeah. Maybe it just took a while. All right, let's see what you're suing for. You're suing for, you want to go retroactively and, and get paid the other $50. We've already talked about that. Now you're also suing for car key replacement, and he wants $100 for that. So Did you return the key? Yes, Your Honor. How many keys had he given you originally? Just one. And you, return, and you left it parked yes, with the key on inside? Yes, on top of the tire, rear tire, yes. Okay, why car key replacement are you suing for? Because I didn't find, it, find his key. It wasn't inside of the car? No. Where do you say you put the key? I have a taxi, your owner. You can check there. I tax him. The car key is under the rear tire on top. So and did you look there and it wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, I look everywhere because it was empty and nothing over there. Okay. But I bring my another spare key, so I opened it with that. All right, and then now let's talk about a parking ticket. You want $118 for a parking ticket. I do see the text where you tell him that you paid the parking ticket. Through Did you pay the, the parking ticket? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I, I, do you have any proof that you paid it online? Online, but this didn't go through. The oh, next time okay, so you owe $118 yeah. for the parking ticket. Yeah. Now let's get to the meat and potatoes of this thing, which is the section of your lawsuit covering the damage to the car. According to you, you had to have the car cleaned and shampooed. Why? Mm. Because he, uh, I mean, he peed inside, and when I opened the door, it's totally messed up. So I had to throw the. How do you know he he urinated because inside your the car? The smell totally is urinated smell. So, I mean, anybody can tell that. So. Okay. Do you have any pictures or anything to prove to me what you're saying? I have a video or a photo of inside a car. Just give okay. me. Okay. Also, may I see the receipts for car cleaning and the shampoo? 
Yeah, I have everything here. Also for the leather cover and the replacement. You know how I'm going to explain. It's when he left it within you, the hour. Did you know, urinate hour, on the man's, in the man's car out of spite because you were I, losing your gravy train? Can I explain to you? Yeah, did you or not? Did you no. urinate on the man's car, in the man's car? Judge, I'm not animal. Okay. I'm human. So are Ubers generally clean? Yes. They are? They are. Okay, what's, um, what is uh, cleaner, Ubers versus Lyfts? Which are cleaner generally? Um, I think an Uber is cleaner. Every Uber I've been in has always been cleaner than a Lyft. What do you say? Definitely Ubers. Really? Yeah. Anybody, any Lyft fan? I say Lyft. My because? Lyft, uh, yesterday he had charge reports in there. I've been in Lyfts with mints, with uh, water bottles, all type of stuff. Uber, they don't, you know, get that same... Cur you know, customer I've service. Ubers that gave yeah. everybody in the Uber shots and had a disco ball. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. If we're gonna have a brawl over this, it'll be the first brawl in America over Ubers going inside the courtroom. You're angry. I can tell from the text that you're angry that he's making you return the car. In Not fact, you you returned the car uh, really upset about having to no. return the car. Your Honor. I upset, but not physically. Everybody can argument over the phone with the parents, with the brother, with the sister. I, I just explained to them on the phone. Brother, what, whatever, you argument is part of our life. Get mad is fine, but at, as long as- you, Criminal mischief is part yeah, of a lot of people's lives. As long as you not get physical, you're okay, fine. I okay. told them I return your call, call Why'd peacefully. you return it five blocks away? That sounds your spiteful. Honor. Five miles away. Five miles? No, no, yeah. No. Why Only would you, mile. wait, stop. How's that returning a car when Your it's Honor, five miles away? That five. sounds spiteful. This is one mile, not five miles. You can't. Why are take you returning it, it one mile okay. away? That sounds okay. spiteful. I have reason for. I don't want any violence, violence happen there. I just want to give away to be away from him. Then for a couple of days. I know. All you got to do then to is one block so away, drop it off. He won't even know you're there. He doesn't know how to, where to yeah. pick it up until you tell him. Yeah, because, so, you know, I was my. With my cousin, they told me not park there, cause you know if you keep distance from this guy, cause you, you want to do everything done by peacefully. This okay. is a video that okay. you took of the inside of the car. Yeah. I got the car. He just left it like that. And the car is totally scratched. Scratch here. That wasn't there. But here, you see, he just make it nasty. He peace inside. You make a pee pee inside, that's why his whole it smells like and my old papers is gone. Okay. All right. Now you are suing for lost wages from eight thirty. You returned the car eight thirty one, so I don't know why you would do that, until nine eight. And your argument for that would be what? Did you actually pay for the car in September at all? Yes, miss. No, you didn't. Each week, I pay him in advance, Your Honor. Yes, I know. I'm this, taking that into account. The last payment I see is on August 28th. So that payment from the 28th takes you until the 4th. You had it until the 31st at night. So the most you can sue for are those last three days. Now, how are you going to prove how much profit you make on that car per day? I make it. Uh, from 100 to 150 dollars every day. How are you going to prove? Not how are you going to flap your gums in my courtroom. I how have, are you going to prove I how have much my you make? Uber statement, Your Honor. How much I earn every day? Okay. Let's see your Uber statement. Okay. Okay. I'm going to need you to come over here, please. Okay. And I want you to show me other weeks. Show me like five or six weeks worth of No of problem, work. Your Honor. Okay, I will do that. They show, Your Honor, from September 3rd to September, what? 30, I made $1,346 in one week. From September 1st, 3rd right through yes. September, what? 10? Yes, in a week, seven days, yes. Well in a week. week, you made 1,300. Yes, 1,300, okay. 400. Now, uh, 400 something. Did you find another car to rent? Yes. Yeah. What kind of car did you get? This is same car. So you mitigated your damages. Why would you be entitled to damages? Because you were out of work because you had no car. No. You were working. Because you are not e Go e back to your podium with mm -hmm. your phone and get away. Go, go, go over there. <sighs> I find that what you owe him for taking the car on Friday night, you owe him $128.57 because he paid for it and didn't use it. So you owe him 128.57, but you owe him the following. I find that you owe for the key. 
If there was some kind of mix up or some kind of whatever, next time don't leave a car a mile away from a guy's house or five miles away. I find that you owe for the parking ticket because that still hasn't been paid. Uh, I find that you owe for the car cleaning and shampoo. And I find that you owe for the, uh, a few of the dents that I see that were on the video. So I find that you owe him $508. If I subtract from that the 128.57, then that means a net judgment in this case in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $379.43. Good luck, folks. I take it now you're putting all this stuff in writing, right? I have the new ones. Hmm? Well, in these two competing lawsuits against each other, the plaintiff ends up with a little over $380 in that, in that figure. Number one, what's your reaction to what has just happened in here? I think that was mis misunderstanding. So I tried to explain to judge, but she didn't give me a chance to oh, come on. She gave you so many story. chances, it's unbelievable. No, she always didn't entrap me. She, I don't know, that was much more explanation to this case. Okay, all right. I, most people so would much. disagree with you. She right, gave you plenty of chances to talk. All right, Mr. Gosh, if you'll stand up, step out here. Uh, you were suing for $5,000. You didn't get very, very much out of that. Now, well, what's the condition of the car? I mean, it really sounded terrible from I mean, what you were yeah, saying in the courtroom. Good. Now, now it's I, good? Yeah, I fixed it and all that stuff, so now it's good. All right. You're going to drive it? You feel okay driving uh, it? Yeah, I'm I feel. Good luck. Okay. All Thank right. You. Thank you very much. All right. Harvey? You know, the judge mentioned mitigation of damages. That means you have to minimize your damages. If you build them up, you're going to be out of luck in court.